Hello students, welcome back to our next lecture on environmental modeling and simulation. Today we are going to dive into an insect outbreak model that was first proposed in 1978 by Ludwig. So, we talked briefly about the kind of insect we are going to model and the kind of tree that the, this particular insect attacks. We are talking about spruce budworm insect that attacks a particular kind of fir tree. So, the first thing we need to look at is the conceptual model. So, the first step is to write the conceptual model, let us write it down. So, what is affecting the rate at which the insect is growing dx by dt, it is given by a growth, net growth rate model minus predation and the predation is done by birds. So, we need a different model for predation. So far we have not touched on predation, we are going to use the model that Ludwig used. Now for growth rate of insect, a very reasonable approximation is given by logistic model. So we can use logistic growth rate here, so we have Rx 1 minus x by k. Now for predation, let us think about what kind of predation model we need. Now when Ludwig thought about it, he realized that when the insects are very small in number, so, when n is very small, then the birds that eat this particular insect, spruce bird worm, are not very keen on finding spruce bird worm. They will eat the insect that is already available aplenty. As the number of insect rises up, as the number of insect rises up, there comes a threshold where this particular insect is easily huntable by the birds. Birds can easily hunt this insect and that is when the predation of the insect rises dramatically up. Now, as the number of um, insects increases very rapidly, so let us say n is much much bigger than what n was here, let us say 0, in that case the birds sort of saturate, basically they are eating as fast as they can. So, the predation sort of reaches a plateau because birds cannot eat as many insects as there are present. Now, birds they have a longer gestation period than insects, so the bird population does not grow as dramatically as um, the insect population. So, what we notice is that the predation is plateaued. So, Ludwig said basically if n is the number of insects and on y axis we are plotting the predation rate, when n is very small the predation would be very small. But as n reaches a critical value, let us call it a, we will see a dramatic increase in the predation and then oh, after the predation of uh, insect has increased substantially, it will plateau down to a maximum value of b. Now, we need a model, a mathematical model that matches this observation. Now, here is an example, if you know how things are happening in the ground, you can decide how your mathematical model needs to look like based on experimental data and then you can see what equation fits it best. Fits it best. So, the equation that Ludwig used looks like this. this equation. So, clearly b is the plateau. So, when n is much larger than a, when n is much larger than a, we can ignore a here. So, what we end up is with b, approximately b. So, the predation maxim, maximum value of predation is at b. When n is much smaller than a, when n is much smaller than a, you can ignore this term and what we are left with is b n square by a square. Now, remember n is a very small number, so the predation, net predation is also quite small, which matches the observations that people have from forests where this fur grows, where this insect grows. Alright, so we have our predation term, we have our growth term, which is a logistic term, let us put them together. Um, I am going to use, since here I have been using n for insects, I am going to use n for insects, not x. Yeah, let us write down a mathematical model. Okay, so here we have our model, this is the predation rate, this is the rate at which insect is growing. What we need to do is we need to do dimension scaling because the time scale at which the predators grow and the predators do their behavior is much larger than the time scale at which the insect grows. 
Also in insect outbreaks, since this particular insect eats leaves of a particular tree, these trees take decades to replace or at least 7 years to replace their foliage, their, their, their leaf cover and they take uh, they, their lifespan is more than a century. So, we are dealing with 3 entities here, the insects, the birds and the food. The insects are growing on uh, time, short time scale of months, the birds slightly longer time scale and then the tree we are talking about decades if not century. So we need to do dimensional scaling, so let us go ahead with that. Now to do dimensional scaling, uh, I hope you remember we need to make substitutions. So this is what our model looks like now. Now to non-dimensionalize this system, one very easy substitution would be to replace n by k as the new variable. The other possibility is to replace n by a as the new variable. I am going to go with the second possibility uh, and the reason for that is I want this curve which is slightly harder to draw. This is going to end up being a line because if I just look at this equation, I can already rewrite it like so. This system has one fixed point which is going to be always present which is n is equal to 0 which means there are no insects in the forest to begin with and it is going to be an unstable fixed point and one can argue if there are if there are no insects present in the forest or very little number of them. So in neighborhood of n equal to 0 there will be no predation and the insect population will slowly increase. So it is a it is an unstable fixed point n equal to 0. Now since I have taken n out what I am left with here is a line and here is a curve. Now line if I change the slope or the intercept it is very easy to draw, it is very easy to understand its behavior. Curve if I change its parameters it might be difficult for me to draw without using a computer, without using a model. Okay, So I am going to go with n by a is equal to x substitution, so let us do that. Okay, um, Since I have already solved it I know how it looks like, no delete this whole part let us solve it. So one substitution that I am going to do is n by a is equal to x, so the differential will look like this dn is equal to a dx. So now we have a dx by dt So here very easy what we can do is we can rewrite the curve as b n by a whole square divided by n by a whole square plus 1. So now we have is b x square divided by x square plus 1, yeah this is pretty easy now. Okay, The next substitution, so I remember I told you I want to make this completely without any parameter, so the curve remains same, the line changes. Okay, So what we can do is we can get rid of b, we can take b on the left hand side and now we have a by b dx by dt is equal to r a by b x 1 minus a x by k minus x square by x square plus 1, voila this is perfect right, it is non dimensionalized does not have any parameter the curve is not going to change. Now this is also going to be very easy, now remember uh, here a by k and if we look at the units a by k in themselves do not have any dimension. So I can define a new k which is equal to k by a. Remember k is the carrying capacity of the insects, a is the number of insects at which the predation shoots up. So uh, if carrying capacity of the insects is much higher than the number a where the predation shoots up then I know that the insects are never going to reach this particular carrying capacity. They are going to or maybe if they reach they will reach after um, quite some time quite lot of predation because the predation is going to shoot up when n is equal to a. However, if k is less than 1 which means predation shoots up way after the insects reach carrying capacity then I know the predation will never be significant because they will reach the carrying capacity or not significant for long enough time. So this is a very important parameter, I am already looking at the small k as a parameter, a non-dimensional parameter that is going to tell me about 
what kind of growth to expect from the insects. So we are defining a new case. So now we have here a by b dx by dt is equal to r a by b x 1 minus x by k minus this very beautiful non-dimensionalized term. Alrighty. So now what we need to do is we need to define a new r. We need to define a new time. Okay, the homework is done for us. So the new r is r a by b. And then the new time is b t by a is equal to tau, which means new time is a tau by b. Yeah, the time, uh, the number at which predation shoots up, the maximum amount of predation. Okay, from here we can find out d tau. d tau is equal to d t d by a. So this whole system will become dx by d tau is equal to r x 1 minus x by k minus x square by x square plus 1. This is the second time we are non-dimensionalizing a system in this course and I this, this is also the last time that I am going to non-dimensionalize it to give you a demonstration. But there are exercises that we have given you in the weekly assignments, please solve them. Uh, like most courses that involve some amount of mathematics, if you do not do it by hand, it will be very hard to really understand what is going on here. So please make sure you solve the weekly assignments. Alright students, so now what we have is a non-dimensionalized system. So we have done the dimensional scaling, we have a curve that does not have any parameter. So as we are doing bifurcation analysis, the curve is going to stay constant and then we have a line, well it is not a line right now, but it will become a line soon when we take the x common. And so we have a curve that can be turned be, that, that can be turned into line by removing x and we can change the parameters r and k. So let us go ahead with it. So we have dx by d tau x okay, is equal to 0 for finding the fixed points. Personally, I do not like solving the systems to find the fixed points. I like to use geometric approach, the graphical approach and that is what we are going to do here because we can do it here. One fixed point as I shared earlier is, is, is x equal to 0. So x equal to 0 is always a fixed point and theoretically we already know that it is going to be an unstable fixed point. Right? Now let us look for the fixed point. This is a line. So let us draw the face portrait. Here we have dx by d tau on the y axis, we have x here on the x axis. This curve looks something like this, something like this and the line, notice the slope of the line is negative So and the intercept is going to be plus r, so this is r and here we have k, so this line looks like this. So for a small enough value of k, so we are going to vary r and k now, it is going to be fun. For a small enough value of k, we have only one fixed point here. Let us look at whether this fixed point is uh, stable or unstable. This is called stability analysis of fixed points. So remember this system is line minus curve, here is our line, here is our fixed curve, how convenient right? <laughs> so. On the left side of this fixed point, the line is above the curve, so dx by dt is going to be positive, the flow is going to be towards right side. On right side of this fixed point, dx by dt is negative, so the flow is going to be on the left side. Looking at the direction of the arrows, you already know that this is a stable fixed point. Wonderful, right? Now let us keep r constant and let us start varying x. There will come a time when this line will be tangential to this um, curve in one new place. I am going to use a different color for this. So now we have a fixed point here and we have another fixed point here. Let us look at the stability of this fixed point. The first fixed point, line is above the curve on left side, flow is towards right. On right side of the first fixed point here, the line is below the curve, so the flow is towards left. This is a stable fixed point. The new fixed point that has emerged, the line is below the curve both on either side of the fixed point. So we know that this is dx by d tau is going to be negative on either side of the fixed point flow is going to be towards left. So this is a half stable, half unstable fixed point. Now let us uh, increase the value of k. So we are increasing the value of k, right? So let us increase the value of k even further. 
keeping our constant and now we have a system where we have two new fixed points. I'm going to use a different color for this. Okay, two new fixed points now. So again, one fixed point is here. So one fixed point is here, using green for this. We have one fixed point here and one fixed point here. Let's look at stability of this fixed point. The first fixed point, line is above the curve on left, line is below the curve on right. So this remains a stable fixed point. The second fixed point, this one, on left side, the line is below the curve, on right side, line is above the curve, which means when line is below the curve, your dx by d2 is going to be negative. So the flow is towards left, on right side, the flow is towards right. This is an unstable fixed point. The third fixed point here, this is a stable fixed point and I leave it up to you to find out why. Okay, one correction. The right nomenclature for these fixed points, the more accurate nomenclature would be something like this. Now that we have three new fixed points. This is the second fixed point. This is the third fixed point and this is the fourth fixed point. Remember the first fixed point is zero itself, which is an unstable fixed point, yeah? So basically we can read all this diagram. Notice I don't even need to know how this curve actually looks like. I already know what the stability analysis is. I already know what the fixed points are. This is the beauty of and power of geometric approach. Even though the models we are running are quite small, very soon I will start giving you examples of models that have been used by real by actual scientists to solve our current problems not problems that were that we addressed in 1970s 1980s okay current problems like climate crisis and gdp and relationship between our policies and the environmental challenges we are facing using these very simple mathematical tools and geometric approach okay so basically we have four fixed points here so coming back to insect outbreak model an unstable fixed point at x equal to 0 then we have another close by stable fixed point, this one. And then we have slightly far away third fixed point, which is unstable. And then quite far away fourth fixed point, I'm going to make this long, quite far away stable fixed point. Yeah. Now you already know, right? The flow around the unstable fixed point will be away from it. So between the first and second fixed point, first and second fixed point, dx by d tau is positive, so the curve looks like this. Between second and third fixed point, the flow has to be towards the second fixed point. So the curve will look like this, and here the curve looks like this. So this is again a qualitative approach, so do not rely on the shape and the magnitude of the curve, we can't rely on that. But we know the sort of behavior that this particular equation will have um, when we try to draw its face portrait. This is a net face portrait. Now let's try to understand what is happening here. What is x? Let's go back to our substitutions. So what is x? This is x. n by a is equal to x. So here on x axis, what I have is actually n by a, which is the ratio of the number of insects to the number of insects at which the predation by birds will shoot up. And then on y axis, I have dx by d tau, which if you remember dx by d tau, we, uh, this part also d tau was defined as dt b by a. So dx by d tau is basically dn by a divided by d tau and if you didn't notice what d tau was defined as b dt by a. So a a will cancel what we have is dn by b dt. So this is basically the rate at which a number of insects are varying divided by the maximum predation. So we are accounting for predation. But if a and b are constant, then y axis is an indicator of the rate at which the insects are growing and the x axis is the rate at which n by a is changing, which means number of insects are changing. Now with this information, let's try to analyze what's happening here. Let me clear up some space for you. Okay, so let's try to understand what's happening here. The first fixed point is an unstable fixed point, which means that if x is small enough, if we have a small enough n, then the number of insects will increase. Absolutely, the flow will be towards the right hand side. It will increase and it will reach a stable number, which is considerably quite small compared to the other two fixed points that are to the right. 
This is what we call as refuge population. Now, what is a refuge population? Refuge population is the number of insects that we will see on a usual level in a usual year in this balsam fir forest when there is no insect outbreak. However, if the number of insects exceeds this number, this second fixed point, notice the flow is still towards left side. So, the, num the insects will be eaten up, they will undergo predation and they will return back to this stable number, this fixed point. So, basically as long as the initial number of insects are between these two fixed points, the first and third fixed point, we can expect that over long enough time if nothing else changes, this second fixed point is where our insect population will be. However, if for some reason the number of insect exceeds, now remember this is n by a. So, for some reason if n by a exceeds this third fixed point which is an unstable fixed point, the flow will be towards the right side and the population of insects will only stabilize at a much bigger number of n by a which means this is the outbreak population. So, even though we were just using a basic conceptual model the rate at which insects are changing is a logistic growth minus predation model. We can already see that the stability analysis tells us that we are expecting a refuge population and an outbreak population. Now, what we can do is we can do some very simple calculations we can understand and this is by just um, for large enough k. Now, I need to come back to this. For large enough k this is what we will observe. For small k we will have only one fixed point which will be stable fixed point. So, as k increases, as the carrying capacity of the forest increases, which means as the foliage of the balsam fir trees in the forest increases, the food, the carrying capacity in the forest increases beyond a certain number, then we are expecting that a new, these two new fixed points will emerge. Then we are expecting that these two new fixed points will emerge and one of them will be an outbreak population. So, now we have a possibility of an outbreak happening if the insect population exceeds the third fixed point which is an unstable fixed point. However, for small enough case we would not see an insect outbreak in this particular scenario. So, we not know that as we change the parameter k we are noticing we know that this is undergoing bifurcation. So, very important to do bifurcation analysis. Now, before I go ahead and do bifurcation analysis let us also vary the r because we need that right for bifurcation analysis. Okay, so, we know that bifurcation is happening, two new fixed points are appearing. So, this is sort of a sudden load kind of behavior. What we are going to do is we are going to draw a bifurcation diagram now. For this situation where we are keeping R positive, uh, sorry R is um, positive and K is here and we are varying the K. So, we are varying the K, we are keeping R constant, R is bigger than 0 and R is constant, it is a growth rate, so going to be bigger than 0 and we are changing the K alrighty. When k is small enough, we have only one fixed point and it is a stable fixed point. So, let us look at this. When k is small enough, there is only one fixed point and the fixed point as we as the k approaches 0, the fixed point also very slowly approaches 0 and as k increases, the fixed point very slowly increases. So, as k approaches 0, the fixed point approaches 0. So, we will start from 0 and then very slowly it will increase. like so, right. I am showing it linear, but it would not be linear. It will be slower than linear, very slow increase, right. Now, after a particular critical value of k, after a critical value of k, two new fixed points will appear. So, if you look here after a critical value of k, two new fixed points appear. First one fixed point which is half stable, half unstable and then two new positive fixed points appear in which the first new fixed point is an unstable fixed point and the second fixed point is a stable fixed point. So, two new positive fixed points will appear. The smaller one is an unstable fixed point. Okay, to adjust to make room for the new fixed points let me make this curve more gentle because that is how it will be very gentle increase. So, two new fixed points have appeared this one is an unstable fixed point it is changing very slowly and then you have a rapid changing stable fixed point. This is how our bifurcation analysis looks like. This is k here and here we have fixed points, right. Now, um, 
Now let us uh, look into keeping k constant and varying r. Oh, also remember that we have a constant fixed point which is an unstable fixed point and it is here. That we will show by dashed lines. Okay. So, once again this is our line, this is r, this is k, this is our constant curve. And this is our line and remember dx by dt is equal to x. This line minus this curve. Okay. So, what we are doing now is keeping k constant and varying r. So, if we reduce r, what we see is this line will come lower and lower. So, this stable fix, uh, fixed point will move towards left slowly approaching 0. As we increase r, so, k is less than k critical, okay? remember that in this scenario. This fixed point will move towards right, but it will maintain its stability. So, nothing is happening when k is less than k critical. We do not see a bifurcation happening. All right, now let us make k bigger than k critical. So, now k is bigger than k critical. This is r, right? This is k. Now we are keeping k constant, we are varying r. So now we have four fixed points, we have an unstable one here, a stable one here, unstable one and a stable one here. Keeping k constant, we are going to reduce r. If you reduce r enough, there will come a time when the line will be tangential to the curve. So we are reducing the r, right? Now if you keep reducing the r, there will come a time when we will have only one fixed point here. this fixed point has moved slowly increased. So, what, ha what is happening as we are reducing r is that these two fixed points that we have here, the second and third fixed point, they are moving away from each other. The second fixed point will coalesce into the first fixed point and this fixed point will eventually coalesce. Yeah, the third fixed point, this will pause. The third fixed point will coalesce with the fourth fixed point and then we will have only two fixed points left. So, it will look like this, let me use another color. So, basically for small enough, we will have one unstable fixed point, a very close stable fixed point. So, we have very small number of insects and then here we will have just one fixed point here and let us look at the stability of this fixed point. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, this whole mm part. So, for this fixed point on left side the line is below the curve and on right side again the line is below the curve. So, what we are going to have is uh, the dx by dt is going to be negative on either side. So, x is going to reduce. So, we are going to have a half stable half unstable fixed point and if we reduce r even further then we will end up with just one fixed point which is a stable fixed point here and unstable fixed point here and these third and fourth fixed points will disappear. So, we are going reverse, right? The two fixed points are coalescing into each other, making a half stable, half unstable fixed point, and then they are disappearing. So, let us draw the bifurcation diagram for this one. So, when two bifurcation diagrams, one is when k is less than k critical, right? And we are keeping k constant, we are varying r. So, r is here, fixed points are here. So, k is less than k critical, we have only one fixed point, it is a positive, well, we have a zero fixed, zero uh, unstable fixed point here. So, it is always going to be an unstable fixed point no matter what the value of r is. Now, as we are reducing the value of r, the stable fixed point will very slowly come down. So, we will have very slow approach something like this, a stable fixed point coming down very slowly. Now, let us redraw the bifurcation diagram for when k is more than k critical. k is more than k critical. So, now we have um, we have two additional fixed points. So, we have an, a fixed point that is an unstable fixed point which we are showing here which is x equal to 0 and now we have additional fixed points to begin with when r is big enough. One is an unstable, oh sorry, this part. 
one is an unstable fixed point which is very small. So, we have an unstable fixed point very small and then we have a stable fixed point which is somewhere here, unstable sorry this whole point. We have a stable fixed point which is here, we have an unstable fixed point which is here and then we have a so to make this because one of the fixed point is going to be very large in order to make this I am going to delete the equation here right. So, we have for any value of r we have a small fixed point here which is a stable fixed point. Then we have a slightly larger fixed point which is an unstable fixed point and then a very large stable fixed point as we change the value of r as we are reducing r. So, we are going from this side to left side what will happen is that this fixed point will come slowly close to 0 it is a stable fixed point. The third fixed point this one as will slowly increase so this particular fixed point is going to slowly increase and it is an unstable fixed point and it is going to colli collide not collide it is going to clash it is going to clash here at a particular critical value of r critical is going to combine. So, this is how the system will look like this will slowly increase this will slowly decrease and this will increase very rapidly. So, this is how our bifurcation diagram looks here. Now, let us put it together in 3D in 3D this is how our system looks. Now, on x axis we have r on y axis we have k and on z axis we have x remember x is n by a. And if you note remember the simple 2D bifurcation diagram that we made here when we were varying the value of k we noticed that we have an outbreak population and a refuge population. How does this look here? We have an outbreak population which is on this part of the surface and we have a refuge population which is on this part of the surface. Now, if your k is small enough so we are closer to this side of the system this side of the surface if the k is small enough you do not see any outbreak or refuge it is a very small transition there is only one fixed point. If your k increases beyond k critical which will vary for your with your r when your a k is higher than k critical suddenly you have additional fixed points appear so one fixed point here one fixed point here and one fixed point here and of course one fixed point is unstable x equal to 0. Now, here is a problem you will see a certain increase from refuge number to outbreak number or you will see a certain decrease from outbreak to refuge number. This is this should be this should remind you of the imperfection model that we did earlier where I introduced an imperfection h in the pitchfork bifurcation. I am not labeling this as pitchfork bifurcation but this model behaves uncannily similar to that. So, I wanted to give this in, as an example to show you that imperfection is not the only way to see catastrophes to model catastrophes whether it is catastrophe where things are blowing up or catastrophe where things are go, ex, going to extinction. You can also use very simple mathematical models that do not have imperfection to, un, to model things like insect outbreak disease outbreak. Thank you very much see you in the next lecture.